Hello and welcome back to my vlog. As you can see, it's about the end of the growing season here. The raspberry plants are looking a little out of it. The Power of Concentration by Theron Q. Dumont, Part 15. Lesson 7, The Concentrated Mental Demand, Part 1. The mental demand is the potent force in achievement. The attitude of the mind affects the expression of the face, determines action, changes our physical condition, and regulates our lives. I will not here attempt to explain the silent force that achieves results. You want to develop your mental powers so you can affect the thing sought, and that is what I want to teach you. There is wonderful power and possibility in the concentrated mental demand. This, like all other forces, is controlled by laws. It can, like all other forces, be wonderfully increased by consecutive, systematized effort. The mental demand must be directed by every power of the mind and every possible element should be used to make the demand materialize. You can so intently desire a thing that you can exclude all distracting thoughts. When you practice this singleness of concentration until you attain the end sought, you have developed a will capable of accomplishing whatever you wish. As long as you can only do the ordinary things, you will be counted in the mass of mediocrity. But as quick as you, as you surpass others by even comparatively small measure, you are classed as one of life's successes. So if you wish to emerge into prominence, you must accomplish something more than the ordinary man or woman. It is easy to do this if you will, but, if you will but concentrate on what you desire and put forth your best effort. It is not the runner with the longest legs or the strongest muscles that wins the race, but the one that can put forth the greatest desire force. You can best understand this by thinking of an engine. The engine starts up slowly, the engineer gradually extending the throttle to the top notch. It is then keyed up to its maximum speed. The same is true of two runners. They start off together and gradually they increase their desire to go faster. The one that has the greatest intensity of desire will win. He may outdistance the other by only a fraction of an inch, yet he gets the laurels. The men that are looked upon as the world's successes have not always been men of great physical power, nor at the start did they seem very well adapted to the conditions which encompassed them. In the beginning, they were not considered men of superior genius, but they won their success by their resolution to achieve results in their undertakings by permitting no setback to dishearten them, no difficulties to daunt them. Nothing could turn them or influence them against their determination. They never lost sight of their goal. In all of us, there is this silent force of wonderful power. If developed, it can overcome conditions that would seem insurmountable. It is constantly urging us on to greater achievement. The more we become acquainted with it, the better strategists we become. The more courage we develop, and the greater the desire within us for self-expression in activity along many lines. No one will ever be a failure if he becomes conscious of this silent force within that controls his destiny. But without the consciousness of this inner force, you will not have a clear vision and external conditions will not yield to the power of your mind. It is the mental resolve that makes achievement possible. Once this has been formed, it should never be allowed to cease to press its claim until its object is attained. To make plans work out, it will at times be necessary to use every power of your mind. Patience. Perseverance and all the indomitable forces within one will have to be mustered and used with the greatest effectiveness. Perseverance is the first element of success. In order to persevere, you must be ceaseless in your application. It requires you to concentrate your thoughts upon your undertaking and bring every energy to bear upon keeping them focused upon it until you have accomplished your aim. To quit short of this is to weaken all future efforts. The mental demand seems an unreal power because it is intangible, but it is the mightiest power in the world. It is a power that is free for you to use. No one can use it for you. The mental demand is not a visionary one. It is a potent force which you can use freely without cost. When you are in doubt, it will counsel you. It will guide you when you are uncertain. When you are in fear, it will give you courage. It is the motive power which supplies the energies necessary to the achievement of the purpose. You have a large storehouse of possibilities. The mental demand makes possibilities realities. It supplies the everything necessary for the accomplishment. It selects the tools and instructs how to use them. It makes you understand the situation. Every time you make a mental demand, you strengthen the brain centers by drawing to you external forces. That's all for today. Make it a great day. 
and bye for now.